What makes for a great vacation? Depends on who you ask. Are you looking to get away? Or bring everyone together? Do you want to get outside and play? Or see a play at the plate? Do you want to feed your soul? Or stuff your face? I know that's a lot of questions. Fortunately, I can help you answer them too. The name's Missouri, but you can call me Mo. And however you operate, I've got you covered. From destinations and activities to sights and experiences, I can accommodate just about any mood or interest. So when you're ready to travel again, my friends and I are ready to welcome you. Because in Missouri, there's a Mo for every MO. To find your next great Missouri vacation, or to take the That's My M.O. quiz, go to visitmo.com. I'll see you there. On the Pod Meets World podcast, join the cast of Boy Meets World as they rewatch every episode of the series, sharing memories and behind-the-scenes moments. It's everything a Boy Meets World fan could ever want. None of us have seen an episode since it aired back in the 90s, so we'll be witnessing our middle part haircuts, hooded t-shirts, and teenage overacting for basically the first time right along with you. Listen to Pod Meets World on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, it's Scott Patterson. Uh, I want to take some time to talk about the free iHeartRadio app. Did you know that you can listen to any iHeartRadio stations across the country inside the iHeartRadio app? You know, one thing I love as I'm away from home working is that I can stay in the loop with my local station and favorite radio shows from home. Plus, there are thousands of curated playlists organized by mood, activity, decade, and genre to make it easy to find the perfect soundtrack for any moment. And let me tell you the best part of all of it. There is a new groundbreaking interactive feature that lets listeners send song requests and participate in on-air radio conversations by recording their own voices. Make sure you download the free iHeartRadio app and start streaming your favorite radio stations anywhere. I am all in. I am all in with Scott Patterson, an iHeartRadio podcast. Hey, everybody. We're live from Halifax, Nova Scotia. <laughs> Home of seafood uh, delectables of all stripe. Um, How big is Nova Scotia? For some reason, I think I thought Nova Scotia was the city. I just realized that's not. No, it's, it's, it's the province. And like, can you give me like, is it like the size of Massachusetts? Like the size of Rhode Island? I think it's a couple hour drive. Uh a bow to stern if you so will. got it got it so it's no yeah. california it's not as like california, oh no no Texas, no 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 it's um it's beautiful have you discovered a favorite restaurant in halifax nova scotia you know there's a couple actually really? there's a couple yeah i don't want to name them but they're because you know i like to go there <laughs> <laughs> And you don't want everyone to know about it. I don't want to ask. Like, hey, come on down. I'll buy you a cocktail. You know. What was I hearing about? Something like that. Uh-huh. Oh, God. What was it? And they're like, don't tell anybody. Like, because you don't want everyone to know. Like, it's the best yeah. burrito you know, in town. Don't tell anybody. Yeah, right. And then they'll, they'll you know, people will order so many, and then they'll have to get cheaper meat or something. And then right, right, right. it, it right. loses its luster. Yeah. So, but there's a couple places and they're, they're fantastic. But it's, 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 it's a fun city. And, uh, you know, it's beautiful on the outskirts of the city. This, it's like unbelievable places. Um, you got to be into boating and fishing and all that stuff because it's like it's heaven here. Water skiing, it's it's great. Oh, does it remind oh, yeah. you of stars? All Hollow? morning I was like unis singles water skiing all over the day. No, you were not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would never do that. It's <laughs> in my contract. Stars I decided, hollowish about it there. Um, uh, yeah. Square. Yeah, huh? a little, a little bit. It's historic. Yeah, there's some yeah. historic sites. Sure. Yeah, it's got is its there own a history. Luke's Diner? There actually is, and I did take a photo of it. Wait, it's actually called Luke's Diner. There's, It's not Luke's Diner. <laughs> I think it's a, more of a bakery. 
but it says Luke's on the front. We were shooting no. downtown one day. I swear to God, you don't you don't follow my Instagram, do you? It's, Ew, it's, I thought but I, it's, yeah, my Instagram's I took, doing that whack thing where I'm not getting my you know. I'm so I took so, so I took the picture in front of Luke's and I said you know something like some stupid that I always say like Luke in front of Luke's oh mind blown or something like that <laughs> <laughs> and, it and it got a headline here in the Halifax Press no! yes 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 <laughs> oh I found it yeah, maybe that whack thing is called an algorithm <laughs> yeah the algorithm <laughs> monkey I'm getting like I'm getting people that I've never seen in mm. their things in five totally. years and i'm right. not getting the ones that i usually see no. oh that's so cute oh yeah okay um i'm I, really bitter that nobody responded to my text outside of you amy that you were going to watch this episode <clears throat> what but text? the second i saw this episode i blasted all of you guys and was like <laughs> i'm obsessed i know but here's why i didn't respond you didn't like it well i love all the episodes no no i no. love them all but this was not my favorite. <gasps> really? You know what? You know what? You, you know what you should have done. You know what you should have done. You should have watched it a second time, because I watched it last night and I was like, "Man, stinkeroo!" Didn't like it. <laughs> what? And then, and then, hang on, hang on. And I was just in a mood. Okay, I was lonely. I was missing my family. I wasn't in the mood to be watching any of this kitty stuff. <laughs> okay. And then I watched it right before we came on and I laughed my ass off. And I really, really enjoyed it. I, I actually, it. I really I enjoyed the episode. And yeah. could not stop laughing. I right. was like, this right. is hilarious. I thought what so. Part? I thought so. I mean, look, I love well, the so, so. I, it's enjoyable. But what parts made you guys laugh the most? Uh, okay. Da- okay. All right. All right. Oh, for- we're going to say the same thing, Scott. Uh, uh, you, go ahead. Go ahead. What are you going to say? When Dave is, is talking to yes! him, too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Dave Rogalski, he steals the episode. He was genius. He was genius. He was genius. Everything he said. I completely agree with you. Everything he said. Don't touch me, Dave. I'm not going to touch you, young (laughs) Jew. I mean, everything was perfect from this guy's mouth. I I have like three lines from Dave Rogalski. Yes. They're all just so good. Yes. He was masterful. Oh, my God. He is a I love Adam Brody because oh. he did that same stuff on the oh, OC. Yes. so awesome. The delivery and the, the cool laid back and he's so smart. And <laughs> he Adam says that, uh, playing no, Adam wait, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. It's like there's nothing better. There's <laughs> nothing better. And wait a minute, wait a minute. The great line was when he said, and you're on, when the, the guys are like, 21, yeah, 21. <laughs> and De- and Rogalski says, uh, yeah, I'm unusually obsessed with that integer. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite is when he told Young Chu to step away from the cords because he might get electrocuted in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Uh. <laughs> Oh man, I, I you know because 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 Yannick, I mean Michelle, kind of he was still great, he but was, I, yeah. I like I like angry Michelle more than I like sort of like yeah with out, the dogs with the dogs and the soft Michelle. That's right, funny too, right. and he had he had one or two good lines, but it's it's not these. Dave Rogalski came in and just hit it out of the park. <laughs> like every time he showed up, I was like, yeah, more Dave, more Dave, more Dave. I agree. I mean, totally. even when he, he was just, it was so great. He's so different from everybody else. He's so yeah. distinctive. And he's just, he's just really relaxed and great. I love the guy. I love him. You got to get him on. I've you asked. Got, I know. I you got to get him on. You, you got to get him on, man. Because I'm I mean, pretty sure he's, Adam Brody's just playing Adam Brody. Totally. Right. No, no, there's no question. He doesn't gets, have to do characters. He is a character. It's so you know? confusing because Adam Brody in real life is married to Leighton mm-hmm. Meester. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. Gossip Girl. Girl. Okay, so he married yeah. the girl from Gossip Girl. Correct. And then the girl from the OC married Rachel Bilson. She married, married um, um, Darth Vader, but they got divorced or separated. Or they're not something. They, they're she not married together. Darth Vader. What's she that? She married mean? Hayden Christensen. Or oh, she okay. yeah. was Darth with Vader. Hayden Christensen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I always, keep, I confuse. Can, what the heck can keep up with all these kids and who they're marrying? <laughs> and I mean, just bouncing around like bunny rabbits. I mean, what yeah, the I heck's going on? Yeah, I always confuse Leighton Meester and Rachel. With Wilson. Rachel, I agree. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I, like, I do, too. Uh, oh, come on. She's Blair from Gossip Girl. You can't really. Yeah. She's iconic. Leighton Meester. 
Her song "Good Girls Go Bad." <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Yes, let's. Yes. Should I give them the synopsis so people yeah, know yeah, what yeah. we're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Let's do. Let's do that. Yeah. So this is season three, episode nineteen. The title is Keg Max. Air date April 29th, two thousand three. So this is literally in the synopsis. So much happened. Lorelai joins the booster club at Chilton where Max is the faculty advisor and he tries to set boundaries with her. Meanwhile, at the end, Michelle and Lorelai are picking up extra housekeeping duties and she has an awkward run in with Luke and Nicole in their room. Jess learns he's getting kicked out of school and he doesn't tell Rory, all leading up to him being upset at a party where Lane's band booked their first gig and ends up getting in a huge fight with Dean. And speaking of Lane, Dave is jealous about Young Chu, and Lane starts drinking and drunk dials her mom to tell her the truth. Can I give my bone to pick? Yeah, sure. Max. Like, yeah. what the hell was that? Yeah. Like, that scene, sorry to come off, like, start right in being caustic, but, like, that scene was so donkey doo doo. Like, what? <laughs> but I'm, I, I, you see, I, I actually disagree uh-huh. with your bone to pick because I am actually happy Max was like, nah, dude, you had the ring, you ruined it, so I'm out. I'm right. out. That you can't, part eat, you is can't fine. have your cake and eat it too. Sorry. Right, Lola. right, that part right, is right, fine. right, right. The moving around the classroom, like, stay 10 feet from me, like, he's a dork i was like no <laughs> max you're cool mm-hmm. be mm-hmm. cool he was well, so that okay so th- so that dorky. was that was theater okay so dumb. that was a theater interpretation of that scene because they had the room to do it because it was two people in a big space right in a classroom they had all that space to themselves how they're going to fill it so they decided to do a theater interpretation and not a TV or a film. Yes, I think uh, you're right. Interpretation, it was dorky and that, weird. Right, and it's like watching. That was like crazy. watching an off-Broadway play. A bad right. off-Broadway play. Well, not necessarily. I thought no. I thought the acting was was good. It just it's it's hard to digest it in a television format in a television medium because that's theater. What they yeah, do I think theater. you're right yeah. because mm-hmm. it's a, this is. I think you're totally right because it's why I don't love people are going to like want to yell at me, but I don't love theater because it always seems fake. Mm -hmm. And so to me, Mm -hmm. this show is real. Like for Mm -hmm. me, Mm -hmm. these people are real. This is all real. And so when I see that dorkiness dancing around 10 feet, 10 feet, man, man, <laughs> like it's choreographed. Like someone's right. like, okay, then you're going to go left and you're going to go right. And you're going to run right. around the desk. Uh, and you're right, right, right. Be a fool. Right. And mm-hmm. then like, they t- almost won me back when they like bumped into each other in the hallway, but still I was just like, no. Yeah, but she so, came run, but she came yeah. running out the door. Why was she running out the I door and like so slammed dorky. into him with her shoulder? It was like, what is going on? Right, I didn't just, like that. I wanted the last time he said bye to be the time he said bye. Yeah. Right. I did too. I agree. Or just I be Max. Too. Max is yeah. so. I love Max because Max is cool, and Max would never. That was not Max. That was an imposter. Because <laughs> my Max would never. <laughs> oh, ten feet, ten feet. Like he would have gone in and kissed her, and then been like, "Yeah, goodbye forever." And yeah, but I don't. But, but he. But look at what he went through. He didn't want to lose his job. You know, because because how how many conversations did we have prior in season one about the inappropriateness of the relationship in the first place, That's right? Mm-hmm. And then he, you know, he's he's going to bend Rory's mind with this. He's going to jeopardize his career with this one magnetic girl. And you know, yeah, you can believe that, but it's like what? So yeah, I I kind of feel like. He's justified in doing that. I don't know if you didn't like how it was blocked. Oh. You you didn't like how the scene was interpreted, right? I, or and it and it also made was. well, it also made Lorelai look a little dorky too. Yeah, yeah, it looked like she kept coming forward. And it was Needy like, whoa, and is creepy. this like, like it was, was a little? Fun. Yeah, it was. It was a little Cringy. creepy. It was. Cringy. It was ki- kind of yeah. I, I got. Th- I thought it was an odd choice when I watched it. And then I watched it again and I thought, yeah, it's still an odd choice, but they made the choice, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess they, you have to. They decided me- to try something, you know, and f- really physicalize the scene, 
Right. And if somebody and- can defend that scene, hit me up because I thought it was <laughs> no, embarrassing. I mean, I'm gonna tell you it was, it was over the top. I will agree with you on that. But I did like the scene. I did like the scene where Lorelai was trying to get get, you know, get through to Max, but he was like, you know what? No, you screwed me over once. You're not going to do it again. Yes. And I stand by it. Like, I do love him doing but why that. Why couldn't it have just been that? I like that she right. came in and called him out and right. said, you're avoiding right. me. And he's like, yeah, but I all, am. And all, right. And all he needed to do to make a really strong uh, response uh, is to stand up behind his desk and use his voice. Yes. And that's it. it. And that's all it needed. And I think it killed... What I think you're objecting to is it kind of, it killed the tension of the scene. Yes. Because and there I'm was sorry. a lot of tension and a lot of feelings in that scene. And it, yes. and it kind of got frittered away with all that kind of weird staged, you know, yeah. it, it was like, she wasn't trying to murder him and he's throwing <laughs> like desks in front of her. You know, it's like, it was, it was, it was, it was, oh, it was I over hated the top. It. Right. And, it, and for me, <laughs> I'm sorry, but if you right. were engaged to somebody and mm-hmm. you slept with them, Right. And then they dare tell me, oh, don't come within 10 feet of me. Right. I'm going to do this weird. F-ing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 hey, that's 20 bucks. That's $20 <laughs> fine. I love this show. And I find mm-hmm. that scene. Yeah. I'm going to go on a limb here and say one of the worst scenes in the entire run of the series. It was oh so, no! Not worst episode, just scene. That's scene. was it worse than Christopher coming in and doing a whole. I was about to say that you would like that scene. First of all, I love that. Wrath, that. Uh, that whole romance novel scene. That was amazing. <laughs> I love that scene. This scene was wow. so fake because amazingly Max bad. Is yeah. never gonna act like that, and mm-hmm. Lorelai is never gonna act like that. You're telling right. is some dude that she was engaged to and slept with, like we all know it, said to her, don't come in within 10 feet of me. Let me tell you what my Lorelai would do. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. just walk out the room. She's not going to do that dance and try to, oh, let me come closer. Like a freak. Like it was. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that scene. <laughs> Lorelai, way too cool for that. Uh, uh, Some dude says to her, I can't come in within 10 feet of you. Like, she, first of all, I get it. He's saying, like, I'll kiss you. But it's like, dude, you're a grown ass man. She's the coolest chick on the planet. Uh, okay. Luke? But he said it himself. Lorelai is a creature that makes him do weird things. A, so mytho- like- a, a, a mythological creature. <laughs> mythological He's, you're like a <laughs> mythological creature. <laughs> Refer to her as a creature. Oh, you know my what goodness. I yeah. Somebody, I know that I'm making producers lose their minds right now, but can somebody transcribe that scene really quick so we can read the words? The words were not my problem with it. It was the buffoonery. Is that do you want to do you do you want to do the scene with me? Yes. Do you want to be because, Lorelai? Yes, because Who, let me and tell I'll, you. I'll be yeah, Max. I'll be Max. I'll be, Cause ooh. let me tell you, Luke mm-hmm. would never have been ever like that, ever, especially to Lorelai. He would never, well, don't kill with the intense thing to me because I'm a big dork. Like it was just, no. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like reading the, like the scene is almost not gonna, like, I feel like, I feel like the words are actually gonna play off well. It's yes, that's the, what I'm saying. They did yeah. it we're, go, we're going to do it justice. We're doing this as an exercise to right the wrong internally that's going on inside of Amy right now. We've got to write the ship for her. It's like a rehab mission. Yes, I don't think it was. The no, I know words. No, no, it no. Was that? And you can say like, "I can't come within ten feet of you." Like you can say that. <laughs> cool. It's when yeah. great actors make uh, uh, as questionable choices. Yeah. And whose I, fault is that? Like, is that the uh, director? Gosh, I, oh, oh, here there, we go. There it is. Oh, there my it God, is. They are fast guys. I'm telling you, they did this in real time. Like, we didn't like pause and edit. Like, they just found that, and I am ready. Wow, this scene is like miles long. <laughs> well, right. We can just do the the part. Okay. All right, go ahead. Gotcha. T- you sure did. Bad time? Kind of. You busy? Real busy. You're avoiding me. No, I'm not. Then what's with the I'm busy thing? I can't be busy? That's avoiding me, saying you're busy. No, it's descriptive of my current state. These essays are due back tomorrow. I'm way behind on my reading, so I'm eating my day-old vending machine sandwich at my desk in my futile attempt to try and catch up. 
two rotations. What? It's in the Booster Club bylaws, my friend. I looked it up myself. Faculty advisors are supposed to do a minimum of two consecutive rotations with the Booster Club. And you did one. I did three. What? I did three. You went to my third one. I did the previous two you weren't at. You have documentation? I'm assuming you have documentation. Well, I'm sure I can scrounge up a witness. Why did you treat me so weird at that last meeting? I treated you with respect and kindness. That's why it was weird. It's, it's how you treated Terry and Joan, too. I mean, did you also kiss Terry and Joan? Yeah, I did. And Doug, and he was the best of all three. Max! <laughs> I, I was playing it cool. You were, too. I was just following suit. No, I was playing it cool because you were playing it cool. And I'm the treasurer. And the treasurer has to be cool or it looks suspicious. Wait, 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 wait. Ten feet. Ten feet? That's safe distance for us. And the more furniture in between, the better. I'm not going to attack you. I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about me. I mean, there are people... Still walking the halls, and this is my workplace, and I can't be held responsible for what I do around you. I mean, you 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 are like a yeah, like a like a, a mythological creature that casts some kind of. I mean, it sounds like such an insult. <laughs> some <laughs> kind of monster, mythological creature that casts some kind of spell on me and makes me act stupid. I'm not stupid. I don't act stupid with anyone else. Ah, we're too close again. Come on, I didn't bring a freaking tape measure. I'm not good at judging distances. You'll have to help me out with the 10 feet thing. Well, it's a little bit bigger than a basketball player. Just keep a really big basketball player between us. But there's a sentence. That's okay, so now here's, this before. is, okay, so, okay, I'm going to stop. Okay. Hang on. This is where it goes awry. Yeah, this is, it was this is, this dorky.com. Is where, okay, so this is where the interpretation goes awry. So okay, let's so go. so let's reinterpret it. Let's, no, let's fix it. Because I don't mind not changing the words. It was their movements that just. <clears throat> right. I was going to say, when you're reading it, it actually like listening back. I'm like, oh, it doesn't sound that bad. No, it's okay, kind of so, cool. So, it's okay. The so here's the, the thing. Page are good. So, if, so if I'm standing up and you're standing over there, mm-hmm. I'm not worried. And, and I'm just standing there talking. I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about me. I mean, there are still people walking the halls and this is my workplace and I can't be held responsible for what I do around you. Smile on my face. I mean, you are like. You are like a mythological creature that casts some kind of spell on me and makes me act stupid. I'm not stupid. I don't act stupid with anyone else. Uh, right. Too close I, what again. I would have done. Like just underplay it and play and play the attraction. Yes. If I was Lorelai, I would have kind of not sat the on fe- the- Not the fear. Yeah. Right. Not exactly. Right. Movement. I would have sat on the desk. And right. Max could have kind of got up and sort of been walking a little bit. Wait, you're getting close. You know, just... This is a seduction. This is a seduction scene. Yes. Okay. So do it. Do it like that. Okay. Do it. Do it sexy. Do it sexy. I didn't bring it. I'm doing it. I'm being sexy. I do. I okay. I know it's blowing me away. Uh, I don't act stupid with anyone else. Ah, you're too close again. I didn't bring a tape measure. Look, (laughs) I'm I'm not good at judging distances. Maybe you can help me out with the ten feet thing. Well, it's a little bit bigger than a basketball player. Just keep a really big basketball player <laughs> between. That's a sentence that's never been uttered before. Well, there are other complications with this whole thing, you know. Just thought I'd tell you. What other complications? I was, I was seeing somebody in California. There, I said it. Oh, you mean you weren't living like a Trappist monk while you were in California? So I'm at this shocked. point, so at this point, they're embracing, right? Well, I think they're just yes. getting close. I think they're no, getting No, no, no. It's getting sexy and hot I think in they're there. just getting closer. Like, oh, it's getting <laughs> like steamy. Sliding over the getting door. steamy. Keep going. That doesn't bother you? Max, we weren't together. Be, I mean, be, cool, be, be sexy and cool. Relax. Well, that was my sexy and cool. Oh. Well, relax more. You mean that doesn't bother you? Uh, that doesn't bother you? Max. Come on, we're holding. We're holding each other. No, that, I I wouldn't be. I'd I, still, I'm I'm still in I'm having bit trouble on my with this. I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble with this actress. <laughs> Max, we weren't together. I mean, I've been seeing someone too. Well, I would probably still be seeing Diane if I hadn't moved back there. That's something to think about. So you can't date anyone for the rest of your life because you stayed in California. You might still be dating Diane. Yes, no. Okay. Do you want an aspirin? I uh, I'm probably have a tic-tac. Sorry, shouldn't have teased you with that aspirin thing. You know, I thought we were both going to just pretend to ignore the kiss. Wasn't that the deal? <laughs> we had a deal. I don't remember a deal. 
You had your shot, okay. Okay, now at this point, I would walk away. Oh, okay, 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 Now, good. we had a deal. I don't remember a deal. And then he would, that would be the moment where I realize I can't do this. Okay, okay, That's good. the moment. I like that. Walk right, away. I like your direction here. I just walk away a little bit, and I turn around, and I calmly say, you had your shot, okay? You had the ring, and you said no. Yeah, I did. And you said that was right for you, too. You went to Stanford. You dated Diane. It was right for both of us. Well, what is this now right here? It's us. Ta-da. Well, us needs to stay apart. Oh, Max, we had a whole country between us for a year. It's like 11,000 basketball players lying end to end. And yet here we are. I thought I was over you. I thought I was safe to come back here, but no, not the deal. I just, I think we should stay apart and never see each other again. That's impossible. No, it's not. Well, I'll be at the Chilton graduation and so will you. Well, I'll sit behind a tree. <laughs> we could run into each other at a drugstore again. Well, I'm going to run, all, I'm going to order all my drugs online. If my car breaks down next year's. Will you stop? I will stop. I'll keep my eyes straight forward, call a garage, and stay in my car with the radio on really loud till they come, and then I'm gone. And I say we start being apart right now. Okay, whatever you want. This is what I want. And when I walk out that door, it could be very well the last time we see each other. All right. I'll uh, abide by your wishes. Long pause, long pause, long pause. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Lord. Bye, Max. Okay. That's, you, that's this. I think right we did it? it better. I'm not going to lie. I think I, we did it better. I do. I think you got to play the attraction. You've got to almost kiss. I still debate that, but that's okay. You're the director. But not that shenanigans. Right. Well, good, good episode, everybody. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still okay with the shenanigans, but I will say that I did like what you guys, I do like this, your take on it in the sense of like, there's more drama, there's more lust and love and, you know, mm -hmm. fire. That's the, rela that's the, I, uh, you have to, I, I think you play, there's a lot of pain there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm. there's a lot of pain there in both of them. And I think yes. you got to stand still and do it. Scott, yes, that's Let what it resonate. The, the goofiness mm -hmm. made it seem right. like like they they kissed one time in a like in a high school dance. It's like mm -hmm. no, like and the coat room kiss mm -hmm. felt way more real to me because it was like it happened. It was real. This just seemed it's it it had to be oil. it had to be internalized. Yeah had to be well, internalized and it had to mean it had to be very powerful and hard for them to deliver those things. yes it wasn't hard they were being dorks <laughs> i know i said dorky like i don't know what the word is yeah I goony know. it was They're being like, very high school versus adult <laughs> and yes. it was just goony it was like these are the two coolest people why would they act like that all right look let's go back to the beginning of this episode mm -hmm. <laughs> so we start off with no friday night dinner which actually yeah, made me I sad. I forgot this happened. Like, I forgot yeah. that they don't go anymore. Yeah, they don't I, go anymore. I love that yeah. Richard and Emily were just raging. <laughs> They're like, see <laughs> yeah. us. Their yeah, but, small you know, party of 60. <laughs> listen, to totally justified, right? I mean, they got dissed before. the They, di they didn't get an opportunity to celebrate the, Har the Harvard. They didn't get, or Yale, yeah. I'm sorry. They didn't get involved in that. So it's like, all right, screw it. No more Friday night dinners. Hey, hallelujah. And they let's, popular. Like, let's have a like, party. It's Richard like they forgot. Richard and Emily are popular. Right, right. And they forgot that Richard and Emily were probably sort of putting aside their social calendar some Friday nights to host them. Yeah. Right? So what totally. were they sacrificing? And now they're not, they don't have to sacrifice it anymore. So party on, Garth. You're invited to explore cypress swamps and magical gardens and float along the rushing waters of an old fashioned swimming hole. Plan your journey at visitmississippi.org slash outdoor adventure. Mississippi, wanderers welcome. On the Pod Meets World podcast, journey back to 1993 with the cast of Boy Meets World. 
What are we all doing together as adults in 2022, acting so carefree and hilarious? <laughs> well, we started a podcast. Join Daniel Fischel, Will Friedell, and Ryder Strong as they rewatch every episode of the series, sharing memories, behind-the-scenes moments, and all the stories a Boy Meets World fan could ever want. None of us have seen an episode since it aired back in the 90s, so we'll be witnessing our middle part haircuts, hooded t-shirts, and teenage overacting for basically the first time right along with you. Plus, hear from other cast members and guest stars, including William Daniels, Trina McGee, Betsy Randall, Matthew Lawrence, and many more. From the neighborly advice of Mr. Feeney. To plays with squirrels. To cutting my hair on TV for the very first time. To that time I joined a cult. Mm. We'll break down the good, the bad, and the nostalgic ugly. Listen to Pod Meets World on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, so I have a question. Yes, what's the question? What is in that, okay, on the table at the Mm -hmm. Gilmore's, Mm -hmm. Rory and Lorelai's, what is in that bowl? Was it walnuts? What are you talking Some, about? So Where? this is just a weird, quirky question I have. <clears throat> can somebody look, and we can do it later, do it on the Instagram. There's a bowl on their coffee table. And I'm like, what are those things in there? Are they In Lorelai's they a, house? Yeah. Do they have a bowl of like shelled walnuts? Yeah, I'm sure. Have, well, sure. That's an East Coast thing. We always had a bowl of okay, is that shelled what it is? Wal- them? Yeah. Yeah. That's common. It's an East Coast thing because we don't yeah, do that yeah. here. So I was like, no. What is that? No, you you do that's the hand thing around the waist thing. That's a fall, <laughs> winter, East Coasty thing. <laughs> no Wait, are you and the, the first scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah the first yeah, scene yeah. on the coffee table. Yeah, there was. I, 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 I grew up in a house. It was always yeah. like shelled walnuts everywhere. You know, bowls that of shelled must walnuts. Must be what it is. And with a know. nutcracker, and then yes. you know, you sit down, you have a little nut snack. You know, that's wonderful. <laughs> that is Here, I just pulled yeah, it. Yeah, okay, see yeah, there it. There it is. So yeah, there it is. Yeah. Is that a Bowl yeah. of walnuts? That um, probably is, yeah. That doesn't seem on brand for them. I though. agree. It's more like hot no. Cheetos or something. Right, they don't in there. Eat no, that. no, 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 no. Walnuts? No, nah, walnuts, hot yeah. Because walnuts keep, you know, you can keep them there for months. Also, did Laura get just a new the... hair kind of look in this episode? I loved it, but I think she did. I, can't, I couldn't do it with the hat. The hat just oh. didn't work. <laughs> the hat. <laughs> what, the can- the, what, that, 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 that newsboy? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the heck that was. It was all about. so off brand. Another bone to pick. Yeah, that yeah. The was hat so... was my bone to pick. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was, I was struggling in that scene. Yeah, it's a lot of pink and a lot of hat and like, what's going on? <laughs> okay, we're what not there it? yet. All right, so, so we, there. we go to um, jumping around like a Lorelai's bunch of got the digital frogs. camera. <laughs> Huh? The digital so now camera. We're in the diner, and <laughs> right, Lola's got right. the digital camera, and she's like, oh, "Let me take a picture of the menu, and then I'll look at it on my camera." Mm-hmm. That is mm-hmm. so 2003. Everyone carrying yeah. a digital camera and like right. thinking it's the coolest thing <clears throat> ever. It was like a mm-hmm. brick you throw in your purse. <laughs> no, you just keep it on your wrist. And, yeah, that too. <laughs> right. So wow. uh, bad. Like, yeah, that's many- when that's when that's when Apple stock was you know pennies. Should have bought more. <laughs> Right, yeah, they came back a couple of years later to crush it. <laughs> but like, how many random digital cameras do people have in their like junk drawer that probably has like a thousand photos on some? Oh yeah, what were those things oh, called? Oh yeah, memory SD card. Me- yeah. yeah, yeah. I have a whole drawer, two drawers filled with old cameras. <laughs> you know what I found? <laughs> One of those. Remember those Kodak disposable cameras? I have two. I have like three those of those, are, those undeveloped like- film. By the way, those are like making a comeback. Like people are buying them. Yeah. Like Urban yeah. Outfitters sells them. But where do yeah. you take the thing to get the photos? Yeah, where would you do like, it? Like Costco. anywhere. Like, like Wal- the cool Walgreens. Kid, the yeah. cool kids shoot on film now, you guys. Yeah. Like disposable oh, film. Wow. And they make Instagram yeah. accounts that's like like their page on right. film. And they post all their film. on. Like yeah. I've seen that, that with Polaroids. Yeah. Polaroids aren't a thing as much anymore. So it's those now, are kind of out now. Developed. Yellow, weird Kodak. The ones where you like... Like yeah, yeah. the corner. And then you like yep. roll yeah. that thing. Yep. Hunk yeah. of yep. crap. So uh, so it's like now it's a bunch of Quentin Tarantinos running around out there <laughs> shooting everything on film. Remember? Oh yeah. my god. He never he fought the digital revolution hard, and he still is, I think. God bless him. So yeah, absolutely. Okay, now we go to band practice, mm-hmm. and they're trying to come up with their band names, mm-hmm. and we learn that Young Chu is going to figure out how to get Lane to the party. So. <laughs> Was was Young Chu? He wasn't at the rehearsal, was he? He no, just he just showed up no. at the party, they, right? Correct. They talk because they kind of acknowledge how are you going to get 
to the party. So they oh, wanted a yeah. uh, wanted a double leg jump, uh, <laughs> windmill off the amplifier. <laughs> Zach wanted to do that, and Dave is like, "You, you want to think about that again?" Uh, no, more that great again. lines from Dave. <laughs> right. that, you probably you probably want to rethink that. You know, this yeah, is where we learn that that uh, Rory wants to go to prom. Yes. 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 And, and the car was... is missing still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Missing. Mm-hmm. Car. Yeah. And they want to name their band uh, Mile Walk in the Desert and <laughs> the Edge of the Desert or something. <laughs> <laughs> their acronym was so funny. I'm like, I came and followed. <laughs> I did like that Jess was there. Like he's, he, I feel like he was making an effort here, like going to Lane's band practice. Right, mm-hmm. he is. Yeah, I like he Jess. Is. I actually feel bad for Jess in this episode. Yeah, he's too. really just a troubled kid, yeah. isn't he? Gosh, we'll I don't feel bad. I don't oh, I feel, feel bad. I feel bad for him. You do? Yeah, do. my heart was bleeding. Yeah, me too. Like, he's so bummed about like, like reality school. set in when he had that meet. We'll get there, but reality he set that, in for him. I yeah. feel so. I'm not. I don't feel bad for him because I feel like he needed that. But he need, yeah, I he digress. needed a wake up. He needed a wake up call. Yeah. Yeah. He did. He got it. Lawrence yeah. Hilton Jacobs delivered the uh he dropped the hammer on him. Mm-hmm. You're out. Yeah, that you was gotta, rough. You, that was rough, baby. Yeah. Like you gotta just repeat the year. Nothing you can do. Get out of my office. Bye bye. Yeah. Yeah, nice, right? You're invited to explore Cypress Swamps and Magical Gardens and float along the rushing waters of an old-fashioned swimming hole. Plan your journey at visitmississippi.org slash outdooradventure. Mississippi, wanderers welcome. On the Pod Meets World podcast, journey back to 1993 with the cast of Boy Meets World. What are we all doing together as adults in 2022, acting so carefree and hilarious? <laughs> well, we started a podcast. Join Danielle Fischel, Will Friedle, and Ryder Strong as they rewatch every episode of the series, sharing memories, behind-the-scenes moments, and all the stories a Boy Meets World fan could ever want. None of us have seen an episode since it aired back in the 90s, so we'll be witnessing our middle part haircuts, hooded t-shirts, and teenage overacting for basically the first time right along with you. Plus, hear from other cast members and guest stars, including William Daniels, Trina McGee, Betsy Randall, Matthew Lawrence, and many more. From the neighborly advice of Mr. Feeney. To plays with squirrels. To cutting my hair on TV for the very first time. To that time I joined a cult. We'll break down the good, the bad, and the nostalgic ugly. Listen to Pod Meets World on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, a lot of people do think there's a bit of a plot hole there in that, like, why didn't Luke get a call? Like, if you're that, like, in danger, where you're going to be repeating senior year, you don't call the the guardian or parent. But we're talking about Jess here, probably got home and erased those messages. I was about to say, he probably Uh erased those messages. True, fair Mm point. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wasn't like cell phones and stuff, like, called the house. Right. He erased the messages. Yeah. Right. Or like if there was a letter, he intercepted the mail. Yeah. Or whatever. Fair point. All right. So <laughs> simultaneously, we're at the inn and we realize like things are kind of rough. They're laying off people. Mm-hmm. This is the butt scene. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank <laughs> God. I, I like really, you want to ask me how that feels? Okay. Yeah. You know, it's almost like yeah. today. I don't yeah. know that you could do that scene. What? Because it was so, like... Oh, you mean objectifying somebody's <laughs> yeah. body part? Yeah, that was uh, disturbing. Well, I think, I think it would have been fine if it was just once, but it continued. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they just keep doing it to you, too, like... <laughs> yeah. I realized it wasn't okay, and it didn't make me feel comfortable at all. It made me feel really embarrassed, actually. Back when you then, did the scene? Back then. Yeah. It's infuriating to yeah. be treated that way. It is infuriating because you're being treated like an object. And it's, dis- there, and it's disturbing and it's disgusting. And and I had to endure that through that entire scene and many takes. It was all about the butt, the butt, the butt, the butt. And then, you know, when, when you know, we weren't filming, we were sitting down, people were still talking about the butt, the butt, the butt. See, that's it was where the, I it think was, it gets it was, inappropriate. Like it was this- the most disturbing time I have ever spent on that set. And I couldn't, I couldn't wait for that day to be over. Yeah, that's where it crosses the line because for, uh-huh. for me, and again, I'm just giving like a, a random opinion. Like I definitely have had like a guy friend where I'm like, 
Cute butt. You know, where you have that close, close relationship like Luke and Lo- like Luke and Lorelai. So that part was sort of less cringy, but when they yelled cut, it needed to go back to like professionalism. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, were you guys, because really they're complimenting him and flirting with him. Okay, let me ask you this way. Fast forwarded a few seasons, Luke and Lorelai are together and the exact scene ha- same scene happens. Do we see it differently? Maybe I'm seeing it differently because I know they're, they get married eventually. Amy. I don't want to speak for Scott, but I do, I do think it is a little bit different when you have a relationship with your significant other that you're, yes. that you're, uh, yeah. you have sexual chemistry with, you can't, yes. right. you know, right. say things like that. Like that I would be, be okay if my husband told me my butt looked good, but I wouldn't be okay if somebody at the office or somebody exactly. random told me that. So That's I think there's ex- a little bit of a difference there. And I think I'm looking at it with the eyes knowing well, these two are in love and they're getting married. So I think I might not be seeing it right because I'm, do you know what I mean? But stand there. I mean, just put yourself in my place, stand there in front of all those people, right? right. Filming. And, and this is how the creator of that show sees that character that yeah. you can, you can humiliate him and take away his dignity, that entire scene. And that's okay. And it wasn't okay with me. And it, and I hated that scene. And that's, it's the worst. I, that's the one thing I hate about this mm. episode is that scene. To put a point forward too, like Luke during that time was spoken for. He was dating Nicole. Mm. So mm-hmm. that makes it inappropriate. Worse. Mm-hmm. Did, did you say anything on set, by the way? Or no, 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 no. Yeah. How fascinating! Anything. Just breaking just, it down because yeah, you're right, Danielle. Yeah. I'm looking at it as, in my view, Lorelai's saying it to her husband. Mm-hmm. Basically, like I can't help it. That's how I think I looked at it. But you're right. Like he's totally dating someone else, and there's like the whole kitchen staff could have been around. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, Scott. That. Uh... Now yeah. that yeah. now that we've kind of peeled the onion a little bit, I can totally mm-hmm. see how that that made you feel that way. I'm I sorry. had to go to work and shoot that. Yeah. I, I, I I had to learn those lines. I mm. had to rehearse that scene. I had to shoot that scene many, yeah. many, many times. We had to do that scene in a table read with the entire production present, the crew, the cast, all the executives. And they're, oh, but, 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 oh, but, right. he's got a nice imagine butt. imagine if but, you but, 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 and I'm, look, right. I'm not going, I'm not trying to make it too, <clears throat> too extreme. Mm-hmm. You know, you still want people to enjoy flirtation in shows. So I do have that lens on it too. But imagine if it was a woman fixing something, leaning over and change boobs for butt. No, it's not okay. <laughs> no way. Yeah. That yeah, would yeah. never it's Never. it's it's as disgusting for women to objectify men as it is for men to objectify women. And it's as harmful. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was I w- it was just the most offensive day I've ever spent on a set. Did and it- I don't I don't want to be like Johnny Bring down here, but that No, no, no. It's I mean, we fair. do have to point things like that and it was just because it was 2003 didn't mean it was okay. It's never okay. And I didn't feel comfortable doing it. And it was, it pissed me off and I never said anything. So I was angry at myself for never saying anything, but you know, I had this job and I didn't want to make waves and all that, you know, and it makes me feel horrible mm -hmm. because even though I thought, Oh, mm, little hint of cringe. Mm -hmm. I also laughed and thought that that was amusing, but also I think I, love them together. So for me, they are the couple. So it was it, like me saying to my boyfriend, nice butt in those jeans. Do you know what I mean? Like, which would be fine. Kind of a compliment. I think he would like it, but it's totally different when you're like, oh my God, that's not the situation here. Right. 
Yeah. Well, we got I got that off my chest. No, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm glad too. Yeah. And right, I wasn't, if you change I, I, butt for boobs, it's so offensive. I you wasn't expect I and I honestly I wasn't really expecting to even discuss this, but at watching the episode I was like, boy, that is I, Well, we all me, it, took, it. it took me yeah. back like I remember not enjoying that at all. And I didn't think it was mm. funny and I never said anything. So it's like there's that level of shame too. Yes. Well, think it's, about how many things you don't remember, and you remember that I know. so glaring because yeah. it made you feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Thank God and for shame. Dave. Thank God for Dave Rogowski. <laughs> <laughs> he saved me in this episode. He saved me. It's so interesting, uh, and we can move on. But I'm just thinking about my own experience with that scene because also the. Impetus? Is that the right thing? Was that Suki accidentally touched your butt. She did not mean to. Mm -hmm. And she was uh, horrified that she did it. Mm -hmm. And that's all totally acceptable. Like, she didn't mean to. You know, she she was like, uh, embarrassed and horrified. And then Lorelai kind of has fun with it. And I did giggle a little Mm -hmm. watching it. Mm -hmm. Did you guys at all? Or were you guys just like, oh, yuck? I did. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 set up where you're going to almost have to giggle because you love yeah. these characters so much. And, you know, everybody's doing their job within the scene and performing it so well and the timing's there and all that. You can't help but laugh. But mm-hmm. I'm just pointing out how incredibly uh, small it made me feel. Yeah. Doing it. Mm-hmm. And, I think it re- and I think it really reduces the character and I think it really reduces their characters as well to be involved in something like that. I mean, it's happened to me before in my life. It wasn't the first time it happened, and it always made me angry. Mm. Um, Because it just, you know, it does. It devalues people. You're just, you know, if you you are (laughs) just talking about somebody's body part, it's, Mm -hmm. it's, you're taking away that person's humanity. And it's it's inappropriate. Do you feel now that you're older Mm. and, and uh, in a, sort of higher position on these sets that if that you, if if that happened on the set you're on for example that you would call it out and say like this isn't we're not doing this oh sure yeah no i wouldn't do it in a million years yeah no. yeah but that's what's interesting no. you have yeah. more whatever the word is confidence but this strength. is a di- but this is a different set you know it's a whole different uh vibe it's a very collaborative very open place it's a wonderful, I'm not saying Gilmore wasn't, for the most no, part, it was great, but it was a very rigid, and you know, you, you did not uh, diverge from the script ever. You know, you mm. didn't add anything. You didn't, you didn't change lines. You said the lines as they were written, and that's just all there was to it. There was no discussion about it. Here, um, we're molding scenes. We're improving scenes. We're adding things. We're taking things away. It's a wonderful collaborative experience, and that's, why I think everybody's so really happy here because they feel Mm -hmm. valued. You know, it's like everybody's got skin in the game. They feel like there's a creative component here that, you know, they're being valued for. So it's kind of all, you know, firing on all cylinders. So it's, it's really great. It wasn't like that at Gilmore. It was just go in and go as fast as you can. And, you know, hopefully you survive the day. <laughs> yeah, no, and I right? mean, I think it's Dif- different demands because right? of the way the writing was. Yeah, you sort of have no yeah. choice in it, right? Right, yeah. because if you change it, it does throw it off. Yeah, and I'm not look. I'm not complaining about having the job. It was a great job, um, and it, it means the world to me. And you know, yeah. having one of those jobs on even a smaller network means you know you're treated like a visiting royalty every day. I mean, really, these jobs are rare and they're fantastic to get them. Um, yeah. I, I just thought that scene was, uh, you know, if you will indulge shocked, me, it shocked me. Two actually, things can that. be true at the same time. And Scott and I talk about this all the time, meaning the show can be amazing and we love it. And you're still allowed to have criticisms here and there mm-hmm. of certain things or episodes. Right. Two things can be true. Like I, I, I hate that I don't love certain parts of this episode. Because I don't want people to like come down on me or think I don't love this show. I right. do. But at the same time, it's like, can't I love it? But also, and I saw yeah. people on Instagram defending you, Scott. I thought there was such an interesting conversation on Instagram. 
because someone was like, oh, Scott doesn't like it. And they were all irritated by that. And the other person's like, he says a million times he loves this show more than anything, but he's giving his opinion on certain things. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're, we're in an yeah. environment today where if you give a diverging view from uh, an audience, the, uh, the general consensus being that it's a lovely show, everybody loves the show. If there's any kind of criticism, and especially in this environment we're in today, uh, if you have some kind of divergent opinion, you're going to get crushed. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. it, and it's unfortunate that we're in this place right now in, in, in our country, um, but that's just where we are. So I fully expect it. You know, and Amy and I have had these conversations, right? It's like, you know, should I back off on the criticism? And, and it's like, she said, no, this is how you feel. Give your opinion. And it's like, it's the reason I'm doing... Uh, this podcast because I mm -hmm. I'm I'm really curious to dig into these episodes and that's just how my mind works. I'm mm -hmm. Highly analytical. Um, I do feel that I'm qualified to comment on the writing. <laughs> exactly. I've written I've I've written 15 screenplays. I've read thousands of screenplays. You know I've I, I know writing. I've read all the books. I've I've gone through all the uh, uh, yeah. you know the highs and lows of writing a screenplay. I've done all the. I've written screenplays with, with a really good process. I've really, I've written screenplays with a horrible process. And so I kind of learned how to do it. I'm of not course. saying there's the greatest thing since sliced bread and <laughs> I've never had a movie produced. Uh, but, you know, I know about what makes writing really good and what makes it bad. So I appreciate you sharing all that, but also what you told us today, because mm -hmm. I wouldn't have thought I, I would have seen the scene differently, or I think I would have had a different takeaway. And I need to hear your experience. So just think about it. You, you know, I'm in New York. I'm doing theater. I'm studying my brains out. I'm making all of these strides. I, I'm encouraged to go to L.A. I, I, I sit in L.A. I get this big break on this show, right? And you want to be, you know, you want to rise to the top of your profession. If you have any kind of competitive drive, which I do, and most people in this business do, you do, Danielle does, Tara does, everybody does, right? Mm -hmm. They just want to rise up. Mm -hmm. They want to be respected. They want to be feted. They want to win awards. They, they want to be recognized for their work. And I end up doing a scene where people are talking about my butt. Right. And you want to be liked. And so when you want well, to be liked, it's just, you don't want to be ridic You don't want to be treated like you're some kind of, uh, you know, uh, meat object. stick or yeah, it's right. awful. And you don't it want to ruffle feathers. Yeah. By saying, I'm not doing this because yeah. you don't know what's going to happen if they say, well, then you're out. We'll write you out. And what, you know, what, what are Academy members going to say when they see the scene? Oh, we've got to nominate him. You know, that butt scene was amazing. Best butt, you know, <laughs> I mean, really. What am I involved in here? That really questioned why I was doing the show at the time. It's like, what am I involved with here? So there you go. That's just how I feel about it, you know? And I got over yeah, it. No, it's, I really appreciate it. Apparently, maybe I haven't. <laughs> no, I appreciate the perspective, too, because yeah, yeah. I don't know that it was the intention. I don't know that the intention was that, like, but it doesn't matter what yeah. the intention was because of how you felt. But at the same time, I feel guilty. I'm, I'm so I, I'm kind oh, of no, no, talking no, no, no. it out because I feel right. guilty right. Right. that I giggled at the scene. And now right. I'm like, wait, I have to be able to do both kind of where I go. I'm learning and I see that. And then also like it right. is a funny little bit. There is something funny about it, but it's at your expense. But somebody had to pay a price for that. That's right. It's at your expense. And I'm still paying both the price Luke for and it. Scott. Right. Exactly. You're invited to take a vacation from everybody else's vacation to a place where you can explore cypress swamps and magical gardens and see a 65 foot waterfall that once powered an old mill that you can walk through today or just float along the cool rushing waters of an old fashioned swimming hole. See the places and plan your journey at visitmississippi.org slash outdoor adventure. Mississippi, wanderers welcome. On the Pod Meets World podcast, journey back to 1993 with the cast of Boy Meets World. What are we all doing together as adults in 2022, acting so carefree and hilarious? <laughs> well, we started a podcast. Join Danielle Fischel, Will Friedle, and Ryder Strong as they rewatch every episode of the series, sharing memories, behind-the-scenes moments, and all the stories a Boy Meets World fan could ever want. 
None of us have seen an episode since it aired back in the 90s, so we'll be witnessing our middle part haircuts, hooded t-shirts, and teenage overacting for basically the first time right along with you. Plus, hear from other cast members and guest stars, including William Daniels, Trina McGee, Betsy Randall, Matthew Lawrence, and many more. From the neighborly advice of Mr. Feeney. To plays with squirrels. To cutting my hair on TV for the very first time. To that time I joined a cult. We'll break down the good, the bad, and the nostalgic ugly. Listen to Pod Meets World on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thank God for Adam Brody. Yeah. <laughs> he, well, I was about to say, and that hat, that hat, yeah. we're coming right to the hat next, where we just get jarred by that cute outfit with literally a terrible hat. And I don't mean to well, make it. Before we move on from this scene, though, segue. we're missing one weird thing what? from that from that scene is when Lorelai offers Luke and Nicole a room. And she oh, goes, yeah. And she goes, well, you can just stay at the end. I'll comp your room. Like, you know, we'll, we'll take care of you. Um, it's just being awkwardly sweet, but it's almost awkwardly like. Awkwardly weird. Yeah, because we yeah. both know, like, <laughs> we all know. Deep down, these two like each other. And man, nothing's ever been more uh, clear than the awkwardness of the scene. I think maybe that's my criticism because Lorelai was so un Lorelai. You want to get whole out episode. of there. What are you oh. doing? Why are you mm-hmm. staying? And why mm-hmm. are you, like, just. I oh I literally mm-hmm. I yeah. I didn't mm-hmm. I did not yeah. like it. And yeah. are we supposed to cringe? Like that's my thing is like I hated that scene too, but that one seemed intentional. I'm supposed mm-hmm. to be cringing. Oh, it's I right. was right. Yeah, I was like this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like just go fire Frank. Like, right. yeah. like <laughs> also he looked Luke looked so cute, and Nicole looked. They looked so couple that it made it worse. I was like, I want to. <laughs> a part of me wanted Nicole to be like, hey, you got to go. Like, what is that <laughs> you know, like, I wanted her really badly to like, like not mark her territory. That's the wrong phrase. But like mm-hmm. for her to be like, no, no, no. Like you're being inappropriate. Get out. We're good. And she did try like being like, we're good. We don't need the towels. We don't need this. We don't. We're fine. Yeah. But like I wanted her to be like. You need to go. Like, also, the door is right there. Lorelai's very bad at that job. Very bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, no. But I think the writers oh. saw it as an opportunity to put Laurel in a situation where she could be do her yeah, com- she comedy had to. shtick. She, she didn't have staff. Right. And- right. Yeah. And yeah. plus, you're right. That's a good point. She, she didn't have staff, so she kind of had to do it. Yeah. Right. right. But she should have just got the heck out of Dodge when it just <laughs> got so weird and she can't yeah. light the fire. She should have yeah. done She should have so- done all the rooms. And then when she realized <laughs> it was Luke and Nicole's room, she should have gone down to Michelle and been like, this is the one room I can't do. Or dump <laughs> the <laughs> towels and run for it. I've been in plenty yeah. of situations. Also, dump like, the towels. imagine being in a hotel and like the person just comes and starts chit chatting with you in your room. Like, <laughs> yeah. please leave. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> like I don't want you in my room. <laughs> now right, there's right. so many things about this episode that I'm just like. <laughs> but I feel like as a whole, the episode was like as a whole, the episode was good. But I, I l- listen. I you know, Lorelai occupies so many different worlds: her work world, her mom and dad adult world, her kids world, all these different worlds, right? Uh, uh, Rory does too. She's uh, occupying her grandparents' world, her mom's world, the Stars Hollow world. Even the even the even the Stars Hollow High School world, the Chilton world, all these worlds, we finally got to see a bunch of kids at a party having a good time, yeah. like <laughs> high school kids do. Right. Like, and I, I was like, remember, oh, good. I remember oh, my right. first keg. And remember, like, <laughs> remember the kegger. It's yeah. Like the first uh, party you ever threw uh, at your parents' house, you're like, do not use the nice towels. Do not <laughs> screw with the nice towels. <laughs> the party the was very well done. towels, they're bigger well than done. stripes. Totally. The party was very <laughs> perfectly done. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. whoever wrote that scene yeah. literally just left a high school party because yeah, it was just so was, that, accurate and they I, can't figure out the keg. The keg, yeah. Has to do the I, 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 th- I, did, I threw a big party. My my mom and my, my stepdad uh, went to the beach for the weekend because it was only, it's only, you know, 45 minute drive. And so I had the house to myself and I, what was it? My junior, senior year? I think it was my senior year. I'm scared. And I threw, I invited everybody in town. 
I mean, it was a, oh, man, what a shindig that was. Good God. Uh, there <laughs> were the fights. Uh, I think they did, yeah. I was so gone by that point that I don't even remember half the party, <laughs> uh, to be honest with you. But, yeah, it was, it was crowded. It's like everybody in the high school was there. It was, it was, oh it, it was quite the affair. Uh, Every teenager and, does it. We're all so dumb. And even my step <laughs> my stepbrother got in fight and it got in a fight with somebody in the backyard. Yeah, it was no, like a big, there was yes, an actual fight. There was an actual fight. My stepbrother got into a big fight with a guy named Tommy, and uh, <laughs> Tommy was guy kind of Tommy. Tommy was kind of the town badass, and he was a good <laughs> he was a good dude. And uh, they got in a fight. Yeah, they got. Did in a big anyone fight. think the Jess Dean? Very choreographed fight. But Went it was on good. and had too long. No. Nope. Okay. I thought, nope. 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 No, no, no. It was great. It was great. No, it was great. great. It was I great. loved every I second it was of a it. long time coming. It, it wasn't believable because when you hit somebody with a right cross right off the bat that hard and that square, you're going you're going to knock them out. They don't like go like this and go, oh, and then deliver an even a harder one. Not a scratch on their uh, face. But they, they but then perfect. you don't get that great scene. I love that uh, fight scene. I, I love like every Dean, moment of it. Dean has been waiting to punch Jess for so long. Oh, I was yeah. like, Wait, we need it, you uh, guys. We need a rewind because I feel like there's a lot leading up to this fight yeah. that literally there. I feel like there's a lot of substance there. That, all right. Okay. So let's let's we're we're gonna reverse. Yeah. So first of all. Let's all acknowledge the worst hat in the history of fashion. <laughs> we have to. Worst that hat. was really. It just uh, it, like and it she just did not. Why she doesn't wear that. Exactly. And she like she's like a beanie on. girl, you know. Like she wears the beanies. Maybe oh a baseball God. hat would have been like made more sense than that. And she had that cute blouse. Although that blouse. Here, here's what I'm thinking happened with that fashion that day. The blouse was a. <laughs> The buttons were puckering a little bit, which happened. So, so they, they put threw the that juicy cardigan, jacket, <laughs> they threw that cardigan on that was really cute. And so it looked really good. I think they were like, oh, no, this outfit isn't quite what we wanted. Let's it was like the let's throw this on, too. And then they give her that. <laughs> hat and you're just like, it, was, it wasn't even a cardigan. It was a zip up, like juicy velour it jacket. It looked to me. It looked but like yeah, but it didn't cashmere. work with the blouse. Like you don't wear a blouse under that. It's just but, 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 can, but, but why? Why? Tell me why, in your opinion, didn't the hat work? Because I, I, you know, it sort of worked for me and it sort of didn't work for me. And, <laughs> um, you know, everything was, was very p- pink hideous? and sh- was it really? I just don't think many women can pull off that hat. I think men can. And I just if don't you're think women go- can. going to wear that hat, in my opinion, you can't have all the other things she had yeah. going on. You'd have yeah. to like literally be in like a yeah. gray sweat outfit or a something so chill. White t shirt and jeans. To- white yeah. t shirt and jeans. Yes, yeah. exactly, Tar. She's got a pink zip up <laughs> cashmere sweater, velour, something. With a flowery blouse that already was like cute, but like to add, it was like ten things too many. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, it was. I don't know. I don't know. God, we need to have like a something for that. Hat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. We should do like top ten fashion fails, like at the end, put it on the yeah. Instagram or something. Yeah, we need to have <laughs> some sort of like um, a funeral for that hat. <laughs> <laughs> It was so bad. I think they all knew it. Okay, oh, so then we get to the party. So let's yeah. break down the party left and right. Right out the gate when that girl was. So first they're there kind of like warming up. and. Well, they got there right. early with the band. And Jess was uh, like, uh, what are we here well, so early for? real quick to go back. We mm. also then found out that he can't get tickets to proms. So that's where oh, the, the yes. argument oh, comes God. from. No, he hasn't told her that he flunked out, right? Yeah. And yeah. that he can't like, go. And that Awkward. was like heartbreaking too. I was so yeah. sad for him. He deserves he, it. I still stand by that. Like I needed, <laughs> I needed that. Everyone's been coddling Jess. Like I needed somebody to be like. Also, if it was like no. you can't, you, you can't miss thirty-one days. No, he's at thirty-one days, and you can't miss twenty. Like who's still letting him like show up? Show up? Yeah, like he well, showed right. up that but, day, but he wasn't showing up. Yeah, he wasn't. He but goes he was there. Like, why then, are they letting him go? Like you're out of here. Well, the for his first walk back in the school is right into that guy's office to be yeah. like, I want to get the, right. I sure, get the tickets. True, true. And the guy right. was like, I haven't seen you here in right. 31 days or whatever, you know, exactly. like that's true. Okay, this yeah, is not true. how it goes down in the real world though. The parents <laughs> well, are no getting one misses calls. 31 days, <laughs> you know, like, Oh, sure they do. 
Oh, yes, they But do. like we said before, really? he totally could be like deleting the voicemails, taking the letters out of the mail. But then again, with being in a small town, couldn't the right. principal this just like walk over to Luke's? literally across the street. <laughs> yeah. It's across. We've seen him walk to school. Yeah, the principal across The principal the couldn't go to Luke's diner and say, listen, like the there's an issue with, Luke's. there was an issue with Jess. <laughs> yeah. Right? right. Like, get like a cup of school. coffee. It's a small <laughs> town, right? Small Why is town. he coming over there? <laughs> exactly. Hey, uh, we got to talk about Jess. If he's so concerned about him he's supposed to be concerned he's a principal he wants to help him right guidance counselor yeah. why didn't the guidance counselor go across the street exactly right not one teacher gets a donut in the morning Come doesn't on. it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't track it's not tracking it's like the first person that calls out jess is poor Lindsay. <laughs> she's like i yeah. haven't seen you at school i didn't know you still good right, right 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 <laughs> You're invited to take a vacation from everybody else's vacation to a place where you can explore cypress swamps and magical gardens and see a 65 foot waterfall that once powered an old mill that you can walk through today or just float along the cool rushing waters of an old fashioned swimming hole. See the places and plan your journey at visitmississippi.org slash outdoor adventure. Mississippi, wanderers welcome. On the Pod Meets World podcast, journey back to 1993 with the cast of Boy Meets World. What are we all doing together as adults in 2022, acting so carefree and hilarious? <laughs> well, we started a podcast. Join Danielle Fischel, Will Friedle, and Ryder Strong as they rewatch every episode of the series, sharing memories, behind-the-scenes moments, and all the stories a Boy Meets World fan could ever want. None of us have seen an episode since it aired back in the 90s, so we'll be witnessing our middle part haircuts, hooded t-shirts, and teenage overacting for basically the first time right along with you. Plus, hear from other cast members and guest stars, including William Daniels, Trina McGee, Betsy Randall, Matthew Lawrence, and many more. From the neighborly advice of Mr. Feeney. To plays with squirrels. To cutting my hair on TV for the very first time. To that time I joined a cult. We'll break down the good, the bad, and the nostalgic ugly. Listen to Pod Meets World on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Before we get into it, can we please just acknowledge Jess's best line ever? The girl crying, and Jess walks by and goes, seems a little early for that. <laughs> You guys. That, no, that was good. That, I was girl. wondering what that line was in reference to. But I thought I feel it was like right. in high school. There was so much to happen before eight a.m. Like it seemed normal. Mm. Like if you think no, that, that was at the party. I was oh, at the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The party. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, but I think his best line at the party was when Lindsay said, uh, "Well, what kind?" You know, they asked Roy. Said, "Well, what kind of music do you like?" She goes, "Oh, you know, Michelle Branch, b- Boxcar oh, yeah. tw- tw- <laughs> tw- <laughs> Twenty, Matchbox bo- Twenty, and Jess goes, "What did he? What did he do?" He, he was he, like, oh, God. He like, goes, something oh, like that. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Yeah, it was I love good. Matchbox 20. I love Rob Thomas. So Matchbox 20 for me. Like, oh. I already think I want to go to that concert, and it's in oh, 2020. But we're talking about Jess. Correct. Okay. So <laughs> back about Jess. to... Talking about Jess is oh listening to The Who. He's listening to Zeppelin. He's listening to the old stuff. Exactly. You know? Come on. How about the kid Come who's on. the party, and he goes, if you drop a chip, pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that whole thing. Uh, the party was good. I'm not gonna lie. The, the party, party was good. The party was the good. Chip. If you drop a chip, re put it, pick it up, and put it back in the what did he say? What I it was great. Yeah, he's I, all I Thomas Kersey kid. or something like that. Like, all his braces in his face. He had a face and full of cousin braces. Rick is 21 and he can get the keg. Yeah, man. Like everybody's yeah. got like the, the but random then, cousin or the oh, guy. With the fake I got the ID. line from Kyle. He goes, Hey, you drop a chip, you pick it up. It's common courtesy. Folks. <laughs> <laughs> so good. And then how about the fact that somebody said emo? Yeah. Oh, so emo. I didn't even yeah. think emo was used back then. I thought oh, emo that was, was like, like that was now. like the emo era. No. <laughs> Like so, yeah. so five? if you have a rock band <laughs> and if you have a rock band, you want to start your show with four banging tunes, just like bam, 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 right, bam, right, right. before you say anything into the microphone, like, hey, everybody, you know, thanks and coming. It's great to be our next song. <laughs> Boom. But you just you just go on stage and you hit the, you hit the audience in the face four songs in a row and then you've got them. Right. <laughs> was Rory introducing them? Who wants to hear some tunes? Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. She's like, so, okay, um, 
All right, everyone. Here's what's your name? <laughs> but that's but that was the, why I said that, gang, was because they the the emo thing came up because that's how they start concerts. Yeah, they want to do with a very slow, slow song. song. Yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. start a show with a slow song. <laughs> no, with a bunch of high school kids. No, no, no. <laughs> well, no, like with anybody. I mean, no. watch watch an Aerosmith concert. Watch an ACD concert. They they just come out of the gate roaring, you know. Yeah, and totally. Lane just Lane just goes all out this party. <laughs> Oh my God! Lane let loose. Like, talk about liquid courage. <laughs> yeah, literally. Oh. But first, just to refresh our memories, how good was it when Lorelai said, "Don't put your hand in the communal chip bowl. It's a mm-hmm. toilet. Mm-hmm. If you have to have chips, be the one that refills it." Right. Yeah. Right. It's like, it's like putting your hand in a toilet. Right, I wanted exactly. to be like, girl. I relate. Mm-hmm. Give <laughs> that girl a kangaroo hat. Yeah, good I for do. you. <laughs> Okay, so back I to just the feel uh-huh. like there's so many storyline storylines in this party that yeah. are all yeah. so significant that it's like so oh, Je- man. so Jess is upstairs trying to you know he tries to get some nookie it ain't Wait, happening he gets pissed I don't think he pissed. was trying to at first I think no, he, he was, went for the belt he went, he went for, for the, the belt. belt. No, no, no! But he went upstairs. Oh no! To, he wanted to sulk. Right. He wanted. Yeah. He needed a minute and because he knows. But he's it, bad. but he but he he always needs a minute. You know, he, he was just a drip. He should have just gone home. He was a drip the whole time. But I, I, think, I think he normally would have gone home, but it was so important to Rory that he stay. Right. So yeah, he was like, right. I need a minute and was no, like, I got to no. get away from all these hooligans. Goes upstairs. <laughs> 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 it's almost like minute. he's older than them. That he's yeah. so like, right, I gotta, right, I gotta, I gotta get right. away from these teenagers. I'm smarter than them. I'm yeah. older. You know who needs yeah. this? Yeah, I I've been to New York City. I've lived there. Um, yeah, I've used yeah. a keg before. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Use a keg, I've right. tapped a keg. Yeah. You know, give me a break. You know? And I thought it was sweet. Like that was their biggest makeout sesh we've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. yeah, and then it did take it a oh, yeah. little too far. Yep. And I thought she was right saying like Absolutely. Gonna, she's obviously considering like doing it with You him. think this is it's how it should happen? Right. Somebody could walk in, you know, and Santa Claus could come down the chimney. Yeah, she wanted yeah. it to be special. And yeah, like, of course. This of birthday course. thing. But then I did obviously they like had like a, this heated argument mm-hmm. and he raised his voice, you yeah, know. Yeah, that was right. But then he was like I know yeah. it's not you, Rory. Right. You know, like, and I feel like if Dean was at the bottom of, of the stairs, like, I think maybe Rory and Jess could have had a really sweet moment. I like, agree with you. I think he yeah. could, he would have said, "No, this is the I'm stressed right now. This like, all these things happening. are happening to me, and and I'm just I feel like I'm disappointing you." And she could have been like, "I don't know." They could have had a they, moment. They I agree with you. Mi- they needed a minute like to separate she gets herself together and they could have talked but dean was at the end of the stairs oh and boy did i love that dean was at the end of the stairs because <laughs> she came crying and she, and he was like right, right into his arms basically yeah and then jess just comes downstairs and i was doesn't, like oh. yeah doesn't dean say are you okay what yeah happened? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and yeah. she goes she no. sees jess come down and he just clocks him no yeah. no he no he he went after jess because jess made a comment about oh that figures that you two would end up together yeah and dean yeah, just figures, said like he yeah. just had it awesome. figures you know oh, just, i took it oh as yeah figures. figures you're right i i took it as figures like oh you would be at the bottom of the stairs like waiting or something no like no that. no he said figures because they're together and he's consoling yeah. her okay like of course yeah. she's gonna right. run to course, charming yeah, right right is right, right. yeah 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 right yeah. Yeah. right so that's it that was and the then, that that was it yeah boom boom Good fight. And, then, and who was what was the best thing about the fight? That Dave Rogalski wanted to talk to Young Chu. <laughs> I'm not gonna touch you. I just just talk about this lane Don't thing. Touch me, I just went then boom, they get plowed in, you know, then the then that was, how great was that moment? That was the best moment of the whole thing. I laughed. Because so <laughs> for one second you thought, okay, we're gonna like, see two different boy arguments: Dean and Jess versus Dave and Young. That Chew. was that was a Three Stooges moment. Yeah, uh, that in was a good way. In that a good was way. great physical comedy. Yeah. That was perfectly was timed. Very, that was an intense fight. It, it went, went right on top of Young Chu. I mean, it was just beautiful. <laughs> was so then great. I did think the ending could not have been more. The perf- perfection. It's just yeah. perfect. The what? Because the cop says, 
Dump All right, cups. folks, drop your cups. Party's over. Everybody yeah, get out of here. Dump your cups and go home, which is dump exactly your what cups happens. And, go and home. Lane is barfing yeah. in the bushes. Barfing. Yep. Yeah. 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 Like, Oh my. What about that phone call to her mom? I mm-hmm. I wow. Mean, gave me anxiety wow. for her. There's going to be a few. Uh, is the word repercussions after this episode? <laughs> yeah. And I really <laughs> wanted to see the other end, other side of that phone call. Lane is really, really didn't you grounded want, until didn't she's you want to see the others? Old. Didn't you want to see totally. Emily Carota? Didn't you want to see Mrs. Kim on the like? Yes. Just cut to her like. I yes. do think we're going to get the Mrs. Kim payoff in the next episode. Oh, though. we're going to get it. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, coming. Yeah. We're going to get There's it. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. What a phone call. Oh, man. The phone but, call yeah, heard I mean, round the world. Let me tell you. Long time coming for that phone call. And what this is what happens of- when they don't go to Friday night party, a Friday night dinner. Friday night dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the party was on but, Saturday. But I thought, I but I also thought that I thought that uh, Dave Rogalski was justified in being totally. fed up He's with the entire crap. situation. I, I liked how he he wasn't hostile. He was just like, I'm done. You know, I totally it's agree. like it's like when are you gonna like what is this? I'm in some in the middle of some circus. I know. And you know? part of me is like, Lane, I really need you just to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever if you want to fake this relationship and like have young Chu like for your mom whatever do what you got to do but like freaking go make out with dave rogowski yeah yeah you know what i mean be right. at the party and have young Chu there but like make out with him that this is, is your so shot true like she should have fully been making out with dave 100 yeah. percent like let's like mm-hmm. a Chu moment knew that was their agreement so like it's not like she's betraying their agreement right it sucks for young Chu that he fell in love with her not lane's fault but you they know agree like, lane does talk to him i i think you're right you're right it got you're right. blurred because they are becoming such good friends and so oh, right. wait a minute wait a minute why uh, first of all so what was the deal the only way that Lane could be at the party drumming was if Young Chu came to pick her up to take her out on a date. So the ruse in general. Right, that's that Lane, the ruse. So they were Lane they, was fake dating Young Chu and Young Chu yeah, yeah, I know that. I know had that. a girlfriend, I, but then he broke up with her. I under okay. So he just came and got her. They went on a date, Mrs. Kim approves, and they end up at the party. Yeah. And uh, what's his face? Uh, Young Chu doesn't know what the shot is. He doesn't know th- the drama he's involved in. He must because No, he knows no. he knows he about was, he knows yes. about Dave. Rogalski, right? It's almost like he just changed his mind because he broke up with. His so what is he still doing, hanging around when he knows that he's because just because Lane needs him. He's, he's like and the he's decoy. To, he's the decoy. Scott's I, right though, because if Young Chu wasn't in love with Lane, Young Chu would have gone and been off at the party, either chatting with other girls, or he would have left and been like, "I'll meet you back here at ten. I'm going to go do my own thing." But if he's, but cover. even if he is in love with her, what's he doing, sitting around pining for in such a public way when he knows that? she's with Dave Rogowski, right? That's a good point. He knows that. I think because at the end of the day, he knows that Mrs. Kim is not going to let that relationship happen. So he's just waiting on the sidelines. That is a good point you make though, Scott, because it's not like Young Chu's not in on it. He's in on it. He knows exactly what's happening. So it is a little weird that all of a sudden he's so like, I'm waiting for Lane. I'm saving this chair for Lane. When we're all like, Lane's not coming because you know this. (laughs) Yeah. Well, she did. did She did mention that he, she felt that Young Chu was delusional. Well, and also, she did I refer feel, to him as delusional. I you know. I also feel like they've been talking a lot on the phone and yada yada. So maybe yeah. he thinks maybe I, you know maybe I got a shot with her. Right? You know? Is this, uh, who knows? A shot? Yeah. The, the young the young boy is confused. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's in love. That's what he is. Yeah. Well. If not for the party. I don't know if this would have been that good of an episode. Oh, my God. I still love this episode, and I still stand by that. Listen, that was a great party. I mean, if you're going to do, if you're going to spend time with the kitties, do it at the party. I, I, I really I, yes. I really thought that was yes. fun. That was a lot of fun. Oh, See, but oh, they're right. hard to shoot. All those extras, those things take forever to shoot. That fight scene must have taken uh, days and days and days. No, days and days. You don't have days and days. They, they did it that night. It, oh my it, god, that looks so complicated. Nobody has days and days and days to shoot a fight scene on a TV show. Mm-hmm. Trust me. Complicated. It, it, it took a couple hours. And I mean, also, yeah. like, correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, but mm. like, it with something that with that many steps and choreographed and stuff, it's kind of like you got to get it in one shot. No, no, well, because it's hard to redo. And do it exactly not, that way. Not really. It's not hard to redo, but I, all the energy is in the first take, sure. Mm. And they obviously had stunt doubles. But I think 
Jared and Milo did a lot of their own stunts. It looked like in, it. In, it, yeah, it, did, it did. It did look like it because usually you can tell if it's stunt doubles or not. I really could only tell it was stunt doubles maybe once when Dean threw him over the counter at the beginning mm. of the fight and he came spilling over. I don't think that they would have Milo do that. You know, right? That's because <laughs> yeah, because that was that was really that was violent. Yeah. yeah, that was that was violent, and it looked like. The, the stunt double hit his back against the counter and yeah. it was just, it was yeah. it was kind of brutal. So was there's anybody I, else just so worried about that dude's house. I was yeah. so like, oh god, I was like, yeah. I was like, so like that poor guy. Don't yeah, break like the stairs. The chips, like so much for the chips. But that was <laughs> a, that was a really violent fight. That was yes. really that was a yeah. super brutal violent fight. I also fight. thought like so, those other dudes could have pulled them off each other and kept them off each other. But they but kept yeah. have, but yeah. no 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 no. Dean is a big kid. You know, he's yeah. over, he's six, three, whatever he is, six, True. four. That's a big, strong kid. So I have a question. And, yeah. Who do you guys think won in that situation? Mm-hmm. Dean or Jess? No, nobody wins I a fight. I think they're both yeah. on the wrong. Nobody yeah. wins a fight, Danielle. Everybody, uh, lo- really? everybody, thought, everybody thought, loses a fight, Danielle. I thought Dean won that day. No, because Lindsay's going to be so irritated too. Yeah, if but I were Lindsay, who, who and cares Rory's going to be like, who, everybody's going to be like this. But I feel like Rory would be upset too that like, because. It's not like she wanted Dean to punch him either. Like Rory's not no. a violent person, so I think Rory's going to be upset with Dean as well. Uh, I'm I'm going to say if I'm forced to to choose, I think I, I agree with you, Daniel. I think Dean won the fight. Yeah, because Jess left. Jess, mm-hmm. Jess left, and Dean still stayed. Well, I, think, I know that uh, they were leaving, but he stayed with Rory, and he is the one that saw her in distress and was like, "That I'm not standing for that." Well, he, you know, Jess had that coming. Yeah. He, pla- he planted the seeds for that. He he mistreated Dean throughout, you know, that entire his entire I, dating yeah. situation. He tried to he broke them up. Yeah, you you know, he I actually don't- broke those two up. He intentionally tried to break them up and he did. So he had it coming. Yeah, I don't know what happens moving forward, but where I stand right now is I want Rory to break up with Jess and get back together with Dean. That's where I'm at right now. I'm, I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I don't no, that's know. not I'm, even remotely happening. Oh. It's, it's, it's so odd that, I mean, I, I think it's kind of perfect in TV world and drama world that Rory having, living her best life, going off to Yale, for God's sake, and her, just such a future, and then she's with this guy that she loves and his situation couldn't be worse. Mm. I mean, he's just emotionally just gone. Yeah. He's he's so troubled. This kid, you know, he 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 really does. He's really really struggling. He's really struggling. It's hard well, to watch. I can't. I I don't want her to abandon him now. I think it, she has more character than that. She's going to hang in there and she's going to try to help him out. Agree. Know? Yeah. Interesting little trivia if i may give it i don't want to ruin anything for what's coming but it was well known at this point that there was a potential spinoff coming with milo's character jess oh and we're going to see that okay right. so th- i think a lot of that is right. also building sure forms. it didn't like we- happen though right yeah, they, they so, fi- no, they filmed the pilot. Yeah. So what happened oh, was Milo. Yeah, from what I understand, it just didn't get it didn't get picked up. So that's he, right. So I don't I I don't know that he was available for shooting more Gilmore episodes. I, I would imagine he was while they were waiting for a pickup announcement. Right. So what because I Because you've got months in between that is that Milo knew mm-hmm. the idea would be to spin off his character throughout season three. He knew like okay that we're going to create a spinoff for Jess. And Danielle, I won't ruin it, but you'll see what's coming and how they do it. And they work it into two episodes of Gilmore Girls that are coming up fairly soon. And they shot the pilot, I think, and then it didn't get a pickup. And Uh, so he comes back to Gilmore Girls, essentially. Right. right. And you'll see a lot of it soon. I mean, imminently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm assuming this is during, this is the time that Dean and... Rory kind of reconcile for a second. No, I'm not gonna answer that. Okay. Yeah, we can't. We're you can't talk about. All right, all right. Moving on. What no spoilers. Going on here. <laughs> no more. So, spoilers. what do we all take away? So, okay, let's give this one out of ten fist fights. Ten being the biggest fist fight ever. Best. One being just a little tap. 
I, I think for TV, you know, with the limited amount of time you have to do these things, I think that's a 10 fists out of 10. I'm yeah. giving for the whole it, episode, I'm, though. This is my pizza scale for this. Oh, oh I thought you just said for the fight. Well, I was trying to be clever because it was like one out of 10 pizzas. The pizza was doing one out of 10 <laughs> fist fights. Does uh, anyone have a better one out of 10 kegs? Let's do that. One out of 10. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, I thought it was like an eight for me. It was pretty mm-hmm, kegs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eight kegs. I liked it. I did. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But now that we've like really dissected it, yeah, I, I could kind of see kegs. I kind of see different sides of it. So I, I yeah. was coming into this 10 out of 10 kegs. <gasps> But I will say now I'm going to I'll give it an eight. Oh, I'll knock off two kegs from that. Yeah, I came into it six kegs and I'm down to four kegs because I'm sort of like (sighs) I'm really grappling with different things from this. So what we know is that we've pointed out some awkward scenes like Mm -hmm. there's the Luke butt thing. We've discussed Mm -hmm. that ad nauseum. Uh, We have which which it deserves a turn down service probably. Um, and, uh, the, uh, you're, t- the you're mythological, low. the myth, you're a mythological creature, 10 feet. 10 feet. So that's three scenes. Malarkey. Three, not three, three. That's three scenes. The hat, the hat four. Four. <laughs> but that, but that wasn't a bad scene. Okay. But I couldn't even watch the scene. I, you, I couldn't you pay attention want, to that scene. You, you want to throw, no, you want to throw, you want to throw a flag. Was. You want to throw a wardrobe flag. Yeah. That's yeah. what you want to do. All right. Um, so given all that. Right. Um, I'm going to, I would have given it a, God, for four scenes, boy, no, three scenes in a wardrobe flag. Mm -hmm. I think we're (laughs) talking, I think we're talking about, I think we're talking about a seven or an eight, but, Mm. but. A lot of kegs, a lot of kegs. That's uh, that's seven or eight kegs. I'm going to say maybe Mm. 7.5, 7.25. You know, I like to be exact. Um, Yeah. Five but kegs for me. Five Dave kegs. Rogowski, oh, well, ten just, kegs. He's, he's adding some kegs for <laughs> me. He's he's a keg adding kind of dude yeah. for me. So I'm going to give it a 9.3 kegs. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah yes. He is a 10 out of 10 keg. He brought me back so many times, and I was just so pleased with a lot of this episode. So I'm going to give it 9.3 kegs. I'm going to stay on five. But with with sadness, with sadness, I give it five kegs. Okay. Because I don't want to give it five kegs. I just have no, to. Right, right. You begrudgingly <laughs> give it yeah. five kegs. I don't feel good about it. Kegs. But I, I have to. No, I don't you know. No, I know. Sometimes you just have to vote and <laughs> move on. Right? Welcome I next week. Oh, good night, Gracie. <laughs> Say good night, Gracie. Say good night, Gracie. Every time someone says that title of that episode, Say goodnight, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. That's all I can do. <laughs> all right. So uh, I just, you know, at the end of the day, love this episode. I mean, sure, it has some it has some pock marks on it. Let's let's just be real, but the second viewing was uh, very, very enjoyable. I need to do that. Yeah, you should you should watch it. Yeah. Just get lost in Kid World. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a yeah. fun place to be. I mean, it is. It, 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 it'll take you back to your high school days when you're sitting around at keggers, man. It's it's just great. It's just great. And you're great. like, this is the best beer ever when you have, <laughs> don't know any other type of beer. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. Just fantastic. And back then, we didn't have, did we have solo? We didn't have solo cups back then. What did we drink? I think we did. I mean, we did. Yeah, we You're not wow. that much older than me. Well, this is the mid seventies. Yeah, I am much older. Oh, I was like in the nineties. Yeah, I guess you're a little older than me. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> My mind were the same. What did we age. drink out of? We drank out of plastic cups and styrofoam. Yeah, that plastic cups. Oh, good old styrofoam cups. Styrofoam. Oh, sty- but they were styrofoam. Oh. A lot of styrofoam. The poor environment. Oh, Literally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does styrofoam even exist anymore? Sure, it does. For like yeah. coffee. Yeah. yeah Only sure in packaging materials. Like sometimes I get a box and I have to like. If there's like something ceramic, but who cares? Anyway, bye guys. That's I digress. All right, everybody. Great uh, discussion, I think. Uh, mm. uh, yeah, this uh, one's gonna like hang with me for a bit. Yeah, same. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not totally just <laughs> <laughs> moving on from it that quickly. Yeah. Uh, spirited discussion. I think we went we went pretty deep on this one. Yeah. Um, but I I think an overall great episode for sure. Uh, all right, kids. 
See you next week. See you next week, gang. And don't forget, follow us on Instagram at I am all in podcast and email us at Gilmore at iHeartRadio.com. Oh, you Gilmore fans, if you're looking for the best cup of coffee in the world, go to my website for my company, scottyp.com, S C O T T Y P.com, scottyp.com. Grade one specialty coffee. Shop sustainable luxury denim and more with Redone at shopredone.com. Redone makes vintage-inspired jeans, tees, and clothing by combining old-school silhouettes with new, innovative sustainability, like upcycling classic vintage Levi's into brand-new contemporary fits in rigid and stretch fabrics. They also do recycled T-shirts, upcycled sweatshirts, clogs, boots, and more with less water and chemicals for reduced environmental impact. Save 20% on your first Redone Denim purchase. Plus, get free repairs for life with code IHEART at shopredone.com. Some exclusions may apply. On the Pod Meets World podcast, join the cast of Boy Meets World as they rewatch every episode of the series, sharing memories and behind-the-scenes moments. It's everything a Boy Meets World fan could ever want. None of us have seen an episode since it aired back in the 90s, so we'll be witnessing our middle part haircuts, hooded t-shirts, and teenage overacting for basically the first time right along with you. Listen to Pod Meets World on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.